what's going on? Eddie here with Guitar Mastery Method, and I'm fired up today because I'm gonna be teaching you some solo blues guitar. This is in the key of E, and we come right out of the gate with that E7 chord, which is second finger on second fret of the A string, and then first finger on first fret of the G string, and you strum all six strings. And we go straight into it. We're gonna do this driving bluesy rhythm. Bonk, ga bonk, ga bonk, ga bonk, like that. You know, that's the basis of the blues, right? So we're gonna keep that rhythm going, and we're just gonna start with this one, th this first chord, so it goes like this. And then, uh, so just so you get a sense of the rhythm, right? So what we're doing is we're stabbing that whole chord, and then we're hitting that low E string to kind of keep that driving rhythm going, like bonk, ga bonk, ga bonk, right? Like that. So we're doing strum, then hit that low string, and then strum, hit that low string, it's like that, essentially, right? But then, before we move on to the next chord, we're gonna hit that chord twice. So you give that a nice down-up strum, so a down stroke and an up stroke across the strings. Then what we're gonna do is a quick blues bend on the third fret of the low E string, right? Which is super quick. So you're just gonna take your third finger or your second finger, whichever one is most readily available to you, whichever one you're most comfortable with with doing a move like this. For me, it varies really, but let's just say third finger for this example. I'm gonna use my third finger. You play that third fret on the low E string, and there's a slight blues bend. So you, you bend it, and then before it really registers as moving into like a half step bend, right to the next fret uh, and pitch, it's like before it registers as a half step bend, that's when you stop it. So it's also what's known as a quarter step bend. You're just doing barely a bend. So you hear the pitch moving, right? And then we're moving straight to the four chord, which is A. And we're gonna do this one real simple. We're gonna take our first finger and we're gonna bar it across the second fret on the D, G, and B string, if you can. Now, if you're unable to play all three of those, let's just say at this particular moment in time in your guitar playing progress and all that, as long as you can get like most of the chord, in which case I would say you want that open low or the open A, right? Then at least second fret on the D and G strings. Because that'll register obviously, right? That still sounds like an A chord. It's technically an A power chord, right? But if you can get that second fret on the B string in there, it just makes the chord sound more full, you know, and bigger. So we have that Right? We're doing the same thing, by the way, on the A string, the four chord, right? Or sorry, on the A chord. We're doing that. We stab the chord and then we, we hit the open low, uh, the open uh, bass note, so, which is an A in this case, the A string. And then we're gonna come right back to that third fret on the low E string. And we're giving it a slightly longer blues bend for effect, right? before going straight back into that one chord, that E7 chord. So playing all that in context, it's like this. Right, like that. So we hit that third fret on the low E string a little quicker. As soon as we play that, you know, we do that uh, uh, up, up stroke and down stroke on that A string, then we go straight to that third fret on the low E string, right? And then we're gonna go back into forming that E7 chord. Now, one thing to note, this is kind of where which finger you decide to use to hit that third fret uh, really does matter. And it's easiest if you use your third finger, and I'll tell you why. So if we're moving from the A uh, chord here, right? We're going. And once I do that, and I do that blues bend, these two fingers are freed up and ready to go straight into that E7 chord. Whereas if I were to use my second finger like this, then it's like I have to immediately jump off that string and then form that chord. So at least by using my third finger here, I have that E7 chord ready to go. It's just like locked and loaded. So it'll look like this. All right, and we do that same driving rhythm on the one chord, the E7 chord. Bonka, 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 right? And then there's a slight rest, and we're gonna go into our first lick, which is this. Nice. So we're gonna slide up to the fourth fret on the G string. Use your second finger, right? Then your first finger is gonna catch the third fret of the B string. All right, classic blues move. Even that by itself, 
all right? So we're going. So what happens here is we slide into the uh, fourth fret and you can slide in from the second fret if you want or the third fret, doesn't matter which fret you're sliding from. I guess I tend to gravitate towards the second fret there, sliding into the fourth fret. And then we have third fret on the B string, right? So once we hit those two notes, one, two, then we're gonna hit the fourth fret on the G string again. Then we're gonna do this little arpeggio type thing where we're arpeggiating the strings from the open E string, high E string, and then the B string, and then the G string. And I recommend using alternate picking for this part. So when you're picking it, it's like down, up, down, up, down, up, right? And then we're gonna slide from the fourth fret down to the second fret, so. And that slide, be sure you slide because that'll just give it some more attitude. Then we're gonna play the open G string, then the second fret on the D string, and then second fret on G, and then open G. So there's a little triplet happening. So we're having triplet, triplet, right? So so two triplets there. We have well three technically. So we have so triple. Actually, these are all triplets. Triplet, 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 triplet. Yeah, they're all triplets, right? So think about that. You can take this whole lick into little three-note triplet chunks to break it down. So when you're, and it helps to even like recite the word triplet to yourself in that rhythm, right? Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. By the way, real quick, if you're getting some value out of this lesson, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out and it lets us know that you like these lessons and you'd like to see more. And believe me, we would love to give you some. So thanks in advance and let's get back to it. And then from there, we're going straight back into the A chord. But we're doing a slightly different move here. So we go back to the rhythm part, right? This is like a nice combination of rhythm and lead with this solo piece, right? We go back to that A chord. Bonka, bonka. Then we're gonna do what seems like a mistake, but we're playing the open strings on the D, G, and B string. And then we're gonna go right back to barring the second fret there on all those strings. So it, it's more of an effect thing, you know, because this is the blues. It's meant to be a little greasy. It doesn't have to be so polished and perfect. And a move like this, I mean, it is technically uh, correct musically. It just kind of has sort of a sound to it that just sounds, I don't know, like less polished and perfect, right? It's like, it's just more, mostly about the attitude. Uh, and the reason why we're doing that move, it actually appears again when we play the next chord, which is a nice little passing chord. It's actually a B flat diminished chord here. So in order to form this chord, we take our first finger on the first fret of the A string, second finger on the second fret of the D string, open G, and then third finger on the second fret of the B string. And we're gonna do the same driving rhythm with that chord, leading with the bass note, the lowest note of that, of that chord. We're going. And we're doing a similar move like we did with the A chord. Only this time, we're only releasing our third finger and playing open B, and then coming back to that second fret there. So the context again, All right, and that's gonna lead to our next lick, which is this. All right, and we're gonna be venturing further up the fretboard here. So we're gonna start by just playing the open B and high E strings, like that, and then we're gonna slide with our second finger here, slide into the fifth fret just on the B string, keep the high E string open. So slide from, let's say, the third fret to the fifth fret. And we play that three times. One, two, three. And then we move down to the third fret, still playing the B string and the open uh, high E. Three times. One, two, three. And then we move it down one fret to the second fret, doing the same move. Three times, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
And then we're gonna go back to playing the open string, uh, B and, and high E. So. Which is more triplets, I think, right? Triple it, triple it, triple it, right? Triplets are great, <laughs> especially in blues. And then from here, now that we play those open uh, strings, we're gonna, it's gonna give us time to move up the fretboard here to the seventh fret on the high E string with our first finger, then the eighth fret of the B string with our second finger. That's a little double stop we're gonna play. Just those uh, two strings, B and high E, and we're gonna go. And then resolve it with that root note there on the ninth fret of the G string. So it's bum, 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 all right? Changing up the rhythm a little bit. So we're going from those triplets, right? I like to think of a move like this, it goes back into that steady pulse of the driving rhythm with this whole thing, right? And it almost sounds like a heartbeat, like boom, 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 right? You wanna think of it that way to kind of give you a little bit of a, 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 how to center yourself around the rhythm and really understand it. It really feels like a heartbeat, that steady heartbeat, that steady pulse. And that's kind of what's happening here with this little double stop. It's like boom, 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 right? And then once we hit it that last time, so it's bum 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 bum. Then we're gonna play the ninth fret on the G string, give it some vibrato. And now here come our, uh, you know, our, we're reaching the end of it, so we're gonna be walking into the five chord. So what we're gonna do here is this. We're leading into it, so we're gonna start by playing the open G string, and then we're gonna play seven, eight, nine on the D string. Like that. And then we're gonna form a dominant seven triad here, which basically you take your first finger and you're going to bar the D and uh, the B strings. But you know, the G string being in the middle will just kind of naturally be barred, but we won't have to worry about that because we are gonna be fretting the eighth fret here on the G string. So you're barring, this is all happening just on three strings, D, G, or D, G, and B. So we're going, that heartbeat kind of rhythm coming back, right? Bum, 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 bum. And then what we're gonna do from there is play the open D string, and then we're gonna play five, seven, uh, sorry, five, six, seven on the D string. Doing that, we're basically mirroring what we did up here, just now down here. All right, we're going into that other dominant triad here. This is gonna be an A7. So we went from B7, the five chord, now to A7, the four chord. So we're going bump, 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 bump. So we're doing the same move here, just two frets down. So we're barring the fifth fret, right? Making sure we're really uh, focusing on hitting the D string and the B string. Then our second finger is gonna grab the G string there. And we give it that heartbeat pulse. Bump, 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 bump. And then we're gonna resolve back to the one chord. This is a pretty cool move here. We're gonna go. We take our first finger on the fourth fret of the D string, and then we hammer onto the fifth fret, then the sixth fret. Then we're going to play the open high E string. And there's two ways you can approach uh, playing that high E string. You can either hybrid pick it, so you can use, like I like to use my ring finger, or you can just use your pick and just reach down and pick it. But the next part is gonna require some hybrid picking because we're doing this classic blues turnaround. The Right? So what we're gonna be doing is picking the A string and then simultaneously picking the high E string open, right? So we start with the fifth fret of the A string and then we're gonna also pluck the open high E. I recommend using your third finger or your ring finger for it. You can use your middle finger if you want, but for this much of a reach, you know, we're skipping a couple strings here. So going from the A string, we're skipping three actually. So uh, going from, you know, the A string to the high E string, I feel like my uh, ring finger can reach a little bit better. So we go, this is bringing that pulse again. Bomp, bomp, right? Then down to the fourth fret, bomp, bomp. Then the third fret, and then the second fret. And we just hold that one out just once. So we're going. Now how you walk down these bass notes here can vary. It, it, it's up to you. You can even use one finger if you want. You can use your first finger. To keep it simple, 
But just think about this, we're going from this move. So if it's easy for you to use your first finger going from that move to this, by all means do that. Sometimes I'll just use multiple fingers or I'll just use one or a couple. I mean, it really just depends on, on what I'm feeling in the moment. There's really no right or wrong when it comes to that, in my opinion. Uh, whatever gets you there, right? So we're gonna do that fifth, uh, fifth fret with open high E, then fourth fret, then third fret, then second fret. Then we're gonna do this open A string, then first fret, and then we're gonna walk into this B7 chord, open B7 chord. So this chord, the form of this chord is your second finger is gonna be on the second fret of the A string. First finger is on the first fret of D, third finger is on the second fret of G, B is open, and then your pinky is gonna be on the second fret of high E. So that turnaround. And then we do one final move, which is taking our second finger and we're gonna hammer on to the second fret of the A string. So, so open A, then hammer on to second fret. And then you play the open D string. Now what happens next could be you end it. Just play the one chord, an E7 chord, or you could keep the train rolling and just repeat it. You know, so once you play that lick, then go straight back into it. Etc. cetera, and et cetera. So now I'm gonna play through the whole thing just a bit slower. What's great about this piece is you can play it nice and slow and it still grooves, it still sounds good. This is one of those things that's meant to be just a solo, it doesn't have to be on acoustic, it can be on electric as well, but it just sounds great and earthy on the acoustic. So now you have an awesome solo acoustic blues piece to jam to for your friends and family anytime you want and at any tempo you want. Blues guitar is something I'm extremely passionate about and even though it seems to be less and less relevant as we enter into this modern age, I'm gonna do my best to keep it alive and kicking as much as I possibly can. And if you're like me and have reverence for this essential and foundational style of guitar playing and would like to know what more you can do to celebrate it on your own fretboards, well, I got something for you. You remember that free gift I was talking about? Well, it's right here. This here is a free blues guitar solo heat map and it's already helped thousands of guitar players play blazing hot blues solos up and down that dang fretboard. And did I mention it's free? Yeah, it's yours. Just be sure to click here to claim your copy or check that link in the description box. If you ask me, blues guitar will never die, so long as guitar players like you and me are keeping that light burning and sharing the wealth whenever we can.